Are you thinking about getting a Boston Terrier, but you want to know what it's like owning a Boston? Or would you like to know some tips on raising a brand new Boston Terrier puppy? In this video, I interview Rebecca. She is the brand new Boston Terrier parent to a red Boston, Ziggy. She shares a lot of great tips on training, as well as socialization, and her experience with raw dog food for Ziggy. Coming up. Hey everybody, welcome to the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel. Consider subscribing if you're someone who wants to learn more about the breed, learn what it's like to be an owner, like today's interview, hear from experts, as well as connect with other Boston Terrier lovers just like yourself. I'm Donnie Gardner, the founder of BostonTerrierSociety.com. Here is Bella, my Boston of over a decade. Today I interview Rebecca Higg. She's the new mother of Ziggy, the Red Boston Terrier. And when Rebecca is not playing with Ziggy or her daughter, she's actually doing some amazing work over on her YouTube channel where she remodels homes. And her focus is doing remodeling on a budget. So if you want to, I'll include some of her videos in the show notes below so you can check those remodeling videos out. In this video, Rebecca covers basically what it's like raising a brand new Boston Terrier puppy, tips on training, as well as some great tips on socialization, teething tips, and Ziggy's experience with raw dog food. Now on to the interview. Rebecca, thank you so much for coming on the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel today. Um, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and Ziggy there. Sure. Um, so my name is Rebecca Higgs. I also go by DIY Mom. This is Ziggy, Ziggy Stardust, my new Boston Terrier. She's a red Boston, which means that she's a little bit more rare. She's got green eyes and that brown and white fur, which is really beautiful. And uh, Ziggy is 12 weeks old. Or she might actually be close to 13 weeks now. She was born June uh -huh. 16th. So I think that she's getting close to 13 weeks old. Female what made you want to get a red Boston Terrier? Well, um, I think it's a little bit different. Like you don't see them as much. My sister has a black and white Boston Terrier, mm -hmm. uh, so does my friend. And um, I just love her color. Plus she matches me. <laughs> That's, <true. laughs> That's important to have your dog match you, right? You know, you'd message me and everything on the Boston Terrier Society website, because um, I know you're up there in Canada and just trying to find a Boston Terrier in general. And a lot of people are having difficulties now with the pandemic and everything. Kind of, what was your process as far as finding Ziggy throughout all this? Well, I was looking for potential like adoptions or any any way of getting a Boston, and it's mm -hmm. it's really tricky. And actually, in Canada, it's it's quite hard to adopt because there we don't have as many dogs that need to be adopted up here. I don't know if it's just the uh -huh. population thing, or That's if it's popular thing. to get your dog spayed and neutered, or people. Who, you know, so I'm not sure why, but it's really, it's kind of can be challenging to find a dog in Canada. Um, mm -hmm. So usually a lot of people will get them sent up from the States to Canada. With COVID, it's a little bit harder to do the transportation and arrangements. I wouldn't be able to like drive over the border to get a dog. Then I wanted sort of suggestions of breeders. And I really tried like everything possible to get Ziggy because I had recently lost my other Boston Terrier. So I really wanted to get another puppy and another Boston, but I didn't care what color. It just happened to be that I found another red and white Boston. And so I feel like it was meant to be. Uh -huh. That's great. Well, I mean, now as far as having a brand new puppy, has anything surprised you with Ziggy? Because I know you had a Boston Terrier before, but once you go back to Puppyville, it's a little bit different. <laughs> There's, yeah, there's lots of similarities in the Boston breeds. Like, I feel like they all kind of have similar behavioral things. Like, they love to bury themselves under the cover, uh, under the covers. Mm -hmm. um, they can be very food motivated, which makes them easy to train. Um, but Ziggy is definitely a lot more timid and shy than Chuck was. And I found, like, even yelling no at her mm -hmm. uh, she would really shake her up. And it, it was almost like, it was almost too much. You have to be very gentle with her. She's just like a, a more gentle dog. And she's yeah. a lot more timid at the dog park. She won't just run up and go through the biggest dog in the park. She sort of sits and waits for the other dogs to come to her before she plays. Mm -hmm. She seems to be a lot, a little bit more e easy to get to settle down. Whereas um, Tuck, I would have to like play fetch with him for like an hour or something before he'd be ready for bed. <laughs> yeah. I feel like anytime I sit down or lay on the couch, she wants to be there and ready to, to snuggle and cuddle. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure your daughter loves having a female Boston Terrier because I've seen some of your DIY mom videos where uh, Tuck was in dresses and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and my daughter Lennon really wanted a girl dog. So I think it's nice to have the girl dog in the house. Uh -huh. And I don't know, 
like she's been easier to potty train. I don't know if it's a female thing or to, to house train mm -hmm. or if it's just that I've had a lot of practice in the last year with puppies, <laughs> but um, I find that she doesn't tinkle all over the house like the males do. The males seem mm -hmm. to like to like to like leave a little drop here and there. Well, as far as the, you know, your overall puppy training, it, well, as far as going potty and whatnot, what has that process been like? Because I know a lot of people have been asking, well, like for me, they're like, well, how did you potty train Bella? Which Bella's 10 years old now. So I'm like trying to rethink of what we did. What has your process been? She, I got like the little green pads from Ikea, like their little grass pads that I had for another renovation project. So I use those and I put them on top of like the puppy pads that you can like that seem to gather up the liquid. Okay. So she's what I've heard about potty training is that they're it's very texture based so mm -hmm. they that's why they end up going on carpet and stuff because it kind of feels like the grass but it's like all about I keep her in her little area in between taking her out so that she mm -hmm. like when she was younger so that anytime she leaves that area I take her right outside and put her on the grass and then lots of positive reinforcement so I actually have never said really no to her uh -huh. <laughs> like, about potty training because she is so sensitive I just really praise her when I take her outside and she goes on on the lawn yeah I've seen where people have actually done like you can actually buy real grass to go potty inside mm -hmm. and I've seen some Boston Terriers tear those up <laughs> she hasn't been ripping apart the potty pads like Tuck did Tuck would like chew the potty pads mm -hmm. and, and then he would like swallow little bits of plastic and stuff which I didn't like she yeah. hasn't been doing mm -hmm. that so that's great that is great yeah that was Bella well for someone who's thinking about getting a Boston Terrier for the first time and everything, and could you just shed some light, maybe something that you would recommend, maybe if it's searching for a Boston or maybe some training tips or anything like that? Yeah. Well, I love the Boston breed because they're a small dog and they don't shed very much. They match your energy level, which is great. So if you want like a dog that walks 20 kilometers a day, they will be that for you. But if you want a dog that lives uh -huh. like all day, they will also be that for you. She, they're very, uh, they're very trainable if you keep them food motivated. So mm -hmm. I actually read like sort of like catalog uh, called mm -hmm. After You Get Your your puppy and uh -huh. it was available for free on the Jolly Tales website here in Canada. I'm okay. sure. I'll put that in the show notes. I, so I read that and it was full of great tips. One of them is that you keep them food motivated by always feeding them by hand. So instead of putting the food yeah. in the bowl, when mm -hmm. you're training them, train them, put the food that they would eat in a day into a Ziploc bag and use it to do training tricks with them. And that can be just sit, lay down, come, um, heal, follow on your bed, or rewards for going to the bathroom. But the book suggests 50 tr training tips a day, tricks a day, or, or commands. Mm -hmm. So um, you really keep up with that every day, do your sits, lay down, stay, and you will have a really nice trained dog. And if you want a dog that doesn't jump up on people, doesn't like nip at people, <laughs> uh -huh. you get everybody who comes in the door to give the dog a treat when they sit and lay down for them. And also just introducing them to lots of people, over a hundred people in the first 12 weeks, I believe they need mm -hmm. to meet and they need to meet lots of other dogs too and to be socialized. And when they say that they should meet a hundred people in the first 12 weeks, that means all different types of people, old, mm -hmm. young, different ethnicities, different backgrounds and people in wheelchairs, you know, like everything mm -hmm. basically because they can develop sort of the same sort of biases and phobias as people do if they're not in connection with babies, toddlers, mm -hmm. children used to being handled like, you know, she's all wild right now, but <laughs> yeah. used to being handled like their ears touched, their paws touched, their, mm -hmm. their teeth, you know, looking at their teeth and stuff like that. So all those tips are in that really handy free book. And if you get them to be food motivated, then they're really, really easy to train. And that's what, also one thing I really love about the Boston Terriers. Hmm. Well, that's really interesting. I wouldn't have thought the whole, you know, introducing them to a hundred people. How are you doing this? Are you just going out on the street basically or going to dog parks? Yeah. Well, luckily in Canada or in Nova Scotia, we have mm -hmm. no COVID-19 cases at the <laughs> moment. So that's we're great. not on lockdown. So if you did get mm -hmm. a dog during COVID, you know, you might end up with a dog that has, you know, aversions to people or to mm -hmm. or traffic or whatever. So anytime I go anywhere with Ziggy, I let everybody touch her, hold her, pat her get to mm -hmm. know her. I let kids handle her, pick her up and all those things so that she is just very much used to people and being around people all the time. And that's, yeah. And the book gives you all these sort of landmarks for 
th like stages that they're going to hit and what you need to do, what they need to have. Like they need to learn mm -hmm. bite inhibition by 16 weeks. So playing okay. with other puppies is a really great way for them to learn bite inhibition. Or mm -hmm. if they bite you, like, oh, I would say, oh, and then mm -hmm. get them to know what, the, what that is. So, okay. so that they learn bite in inhibition by that. Yeah. How about the puppy situation as far as getting her with other puppies? Is there a thing in Canada that is yeah. special that I don't know about maybe? <laughs> well, there's puppy socials, which are great. Okay. So mm -hmm. try to connect with other people that have puppies. And mm -hmm. whenever I'm walking around my neighborhood, if somebody else has a puppy, then we sort of made it a bit of a thing where she keeps going over and playing with that puppy. And then they can wrestle and really like bite at each other and learn all about, about bite inhibition and what hurts their friends and how soft you know, to have a soft mouth and everything. Okay. Yeah. This is yeah. Bella. She had some, you know, those sharp, sharp baby teeth. Those can really hurt. Yeah. yeah. And you can see that Ziggy's teething right now because she's trying to chew on everything. And that's when they can kind of bite down and break the skin. I haven't, she hasn't broken my skin yet. She's broken a few other people's skins. Mm -hmm. uh, I had lots of little cuts from Tuck and I would use, um, a little bit of Gorilla Glue in my cut and pinch it back together. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Little razor cuts all over. Uh -huh. my Taking the DIY mom to a whole new level. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you learn all about DIY butterfly stitches when you are working uh, in renovations. So uh -huh. often. Hey, if you're enjoying this interview, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel just so you can get the latest from Boston Terrier Society. Back to the interview. Oh, one other thing I do want to mention about Boston Terriers that a lot of people don't know about uh -huh. is. Um, they can develop a lot of allergies and sensitivities to food. So mm -hmm. a good way to avoid your dog from getting um, like skin irritations, rash, being like chewing on their paws and other habits that Boston's can get into is do not feed them any food with chicken in it. So they can be sensitive to chicken. So mm -hmm. I give Z uh, Ziggy um, sub-zero raw food, which is like wild boar, salmon, and mm -hmm. duck. They have a few different variations like blueberries and bok choy. And I also give her uh, a really great probiotic that is a human grade probiotic that uh, dogs can actually have too. I'll show you the, mm -hmm. the one. This is the one we have in Canada. And this one's made locally and it's called uh, cultured coconut. Okay. Um, but you could probably find like an equivalent. This is a dairy free um, mm -hmm. probiotic that has 4 trillion active bacterias and 40 different strands in one teaspoon. So it's great mm -hmm. for humans, but it's also great for dogs because it keeps the yeast out of their paws. Like if you see dogs that chew their paws a okay. lot, mm -hmm. it usually has to do with yeast. So this will keep that healthy flora in their system. And like if your dog gets into something that they shouldn't have eaten, give them a little bit of that. It'll clean them out. <laughs> Interesting. How much of that do you give uh, Ziggy a day? Yeah, I just pour a little tiny bit into her, her dog bowl. Uh -huh. You know, about a teaspoon would probably be... Mm -hmm plenty it, um yeah and is it basically coconut oil essentially just no, with, with um, it's, cultured, it's liquid it's cultured coconut it's kefir or like some people call it kefir mm -hmm. but it's just a natural probiotic that's made from coconut water okay interesting yeah i'll put that in the show notes i'm sure i can find one similar to that yeah mm -hmm. yeah and that's funny that you mentioned chicken so bella we never got her tested or anything but whenever she, i can't remember how young she was but the doctor had to switch to a, or the vet had to switch to a grain-free diet. But now I recently switched vets and everything. And my vet was saying she's probably allergic to actually chicken, not the grain-free. So yeah, we're in that process right now. And I'm surprised that it's not something that's more commonly shared about with Boston's. I think any small breed, like a pug or a Boston or a Chihuahua or anything, you should just keep them away from chicken. Hmm. But yeah. I know for I I've just always avoided chicken with my Boston's and I've never had any um, allergy related issues. Mm -hmm. well, that's interesting. Yeah. So I'll keep you on the loop as far as what happens to Bella too. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to give her it and she's going to go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's lots of great um, raw food options that have um, mostly meat in them and mm -hmm. no chicken. Or you can even get some, if you if you do think that they need a little bit of grains in it. Or there's also vegetables and fruit and stuff. You get carbs right. from vegetables and fruits in, in with, their, with their food. And the best training treat is freeze-dried beef liver because okay. it has three calories per little treat. They go crazy mm -hmm. for it, and it gives them that beautiful, shiny, healthy coat of fur. Hmm. So that's okay. the one I love to use for training. Yeah. Now, so do you, um, 
Sorry, I know we did like the wrap up question. <laughs> so as far as Ziggy with her diet, is it actually just kibble that you're feeding her or, or are you doing a raw diet? No, she's on the raw diet. I give her probably like half a cup uh, twice a day. And then mm -hmm. I do a chicken free kibble for training and the beef fry, beef liver treats for training. So she's getting okay. the full kind of serving. With Ziggy, I just started to give it to her when she was like a puppy when she came home and mm -hmm. I love it. And I noticed that she did have some runny stool when I first gave it to her, but now she's totally regular and extremely happy. She drooled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Get the food. laughs> you know, she's right there waiting for it. And she sits there patiently waiting for me to serve her. And I guess another question that I have as far as the raw food diet and everything. So the breeder had her on kibble at that point, or is it still kind of canned puppy food? Yeah, the breeder had her on like freeze dried uh, salmon or something. Like it was like a salmon that you would okay. mm -hmm. So because there was already salmon and duck and all that stuff in the mm -hmm. raw food, I didn't feel like it was that much of a, of a transition, but the breeder did send kibble with her when we brought her back okay. from Ontario. Mm -hmm. So I did like include that kibble in her diet at first and then mm -hmm. I brought in the, the raw food until now she's just completely on. Well, I guess I can't say she's completely on raw food because she gets the beef fried, the uh, beef dry, uh, freeze dried beef liver, and she gets like some of her chicken free kibble for training. Right. Okay. Well, I think this is great information because I've had a lot of people ask me like, can I start my Boston puppy on a raw food diet? Which, yeah, you can absolutely. Yeah. It looks like. And, yeah. And she's doing great and looks great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's super healthy. Uh -huh. Another thing I love to get them, which is cheap and they keep them super busy is bone marrow you get frozen bone marrow from the grocery store right mm -hmm. still in the bones okay. and it's like four dollars for maybe four big pieces of bone marrow mm -hmm. they're already chopped and everything and they will spend hours just trying to lick out all the bone marrow from yeah. the bone marrow. and um. so if, if your dog is in that chewy nippy phase or busy give them one of those and that'll tire them out mm -hmm. keep them busy and gives them that beautiful shiny coat makes them feel really really healthy okay yeah much better than a tongue <laughs> the collagen and the bone marrow would be really great for their joints just like it's really great for us well as far as you know someone wanting to get in touch with maybe you to ask about your experience with your boston terrier or even following ziggy i know she has her own instagram account um where could people find you guys so I'm DIYmom.ca on Instagram, website, and YouTube. You can look me up, youtube.com slash DIYmom. I do home renovations on a single mom budget. And Ziggy is Ziggy My Girl, Z-I-G-G-Y, at Gmail. Uh, or Sorry, she's not on Gmail. She's on <laughs> yeah. Ziggy My Girl uh, on Instagram. That's her account. And I love sharing um, training tips and stuff whenever I have a minute to train to to share those? Yeah, no, this is really great information, Rebecca. Thanks so much for coming on the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel. I mean, I think just with the raw diet information too, that's going to be extremely helpful for people that are interested in something like that. Yeah, they, and I'm no professional at all. I just know what's like worked and kept the dogs healthy and happy mm -hmm. um, and allergy free. So for me personally, I can say that it's been great for us. And I'm sure there's more experts out there that could give a better scientific reason <laughs> no. for them. I know it, it seems to be working. She yeah. looks I don't think so. <laughs> mm -hmm. People want real experiences. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for watching today's interview. I hope it helped you as far as wanting to either decide to get a Boston Terrier for the first time or just made you feel more comfortable about your decision to get a Boston. If you want to connect with Rebecca or even follow Ziggy on Instagram, their information is going to be in the show notes as well as that book that Rebecca mentioned as far as the different training techniques that she's done for Ziggy. It's a free book and I'll include that in the show notes as well. And if you want to see some amazing DIY videos, definitely check out Rebecca's YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, type in DIY mom, hers will pop up, or you can check out one of her videos here. If you want to see more interviews like this, you can check out the playlist that I created here or one of my latest videos here. Otherwise, until next time, life is better with a Boston.